the whole lesson will deal with the identification of the kinds of sources in the study of history and where are these sources usually found. So this lesson will also cover methods of criticism of historical sources as well as some methodologies for doing historical analysis because as previously discussed during our lesson 1.1, the approach in studying history now is no longer about just receiving the plain narratives but also to criticize or analyze the sources of history. So before we move on, let us have, uh, let us discuss or let us talk about the lesson objectives. So we only have two. Uh, you are expected at the end of the discussion to determine the document whether it is a primary or secondary source and the second is for you to examine the authenticity and reliability of a prospected historical source okay so these are the expected learning outcomes from you after our discussion uh, in this lesson okay so do you agree with this one that if there are no genuine and reliable historical sources history cannot be written or otherwise interpreted so this will be setting the uh the revolving quotation for the whole lesson okay so in this modern day and age information has become an important currency so almost all people in the world can manipulate this information creating what is now known as fake news so this is very rampant already because all people or if not all most of the people are already going online so this fake news it may sound a bit new and current but it has been plaguing the study of history ever since so it is already existing even before pa even before the advent of social media so now this leads us to venture into the study of the sources so these are the questions what are the kinds and types of sources where can we find them and how do we know if a source is authentic and reliable so you may say mom why do we need to study these things Kay ano kailangan pa kita mag study about hini when in fact there are already information that we can just read and baga absorb and digest and everything blah 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 pero again we are in the new perspective of learning history and setting pangani even though they are already written we still have to speculate and to check if the facts or information that we are getting are accurate or not okay so as the main basis for the study of history, knowing about the sources of history is a very important matter. So there are several definitions of the word source. So source meaning kun ano ang gintikangan ito sa nga event or usang nga uh, situation. So Miriam Webster defines a source as a first-hand document or primary reference work. But for Howell and Prevenier, in the context of history, a source can be defined as artifacts left by the past. So this means that any object from the past can be a source. So that is old paintings, remains, written documents, etc. So anything or any object, uh, the remains of any object in the past can be considered as a source already. So as such, they may provide evidence about the existence of an event. So furthermore, these sources are materials from which the writing of history, historiography, starts. So writing history has been practiced thousands of years ago. However, the scientific way of writing history, which is known also as historiography, which is a method of doing historical or scientific method of doing historical research that focuses on gathering documents from various sources or different libraries and archives to form a pool of evidence needed to make a descriptive or analytical narrative. It also refers to the theory and history of historical writing that is according to Flandes and Fernandez. So historiography, actually the etymology of the word uh, came from the Greek words historia, meaning from the past, and graphia meaning to write so that's according to sebastian so tama good lang ang tawag is a uh, writing of the of the past or writing from the past okay so in studying uh history 
um, we also have to identify the classification of sources. Okay, so there are three classifications of sources. We have according to proximity to subject or event, according to motive, and according to material. Basically, there are two general kinds of sources of history. So, and that is according to proximity to subject or event. So, first, we have the primary source. Okay, so from the word itself, primary, meaning first-hand accounts that are written by people who witnessed as the events being talked about transpired. So, kumbaga, these are sources that were written by people who were actually there during the event or experienced the event. Okay, so um, this kind of source can usually be found in memoirs, diaries, and uh, personal journals of individuals. So some primary sources are also written by other individuals on behalf of the witnesses of an event. So this is especially true to written materials created by anthropologists who report experiences and traditions of tribes who are unable to write their factual experiences but can articulate and share it orally. Because there are researchers or there are scientists like these anthropologists who actually um, live with the natives, for example, just to know their culture, meaning they are also doing what these people are doing. So they are experiencing everything. So that is considered as a first-hand information because they're actually in the kumbaga they are actually in the in this in the situation or the day-to-day -day situation of these uh, people who they are uh, studying about so okay so kumbaga if these people there are some there are some people kasi what especially in the case of uh tribes because some tribes are still existing they can't really write so on behalf hito nga mga people um the archaeologists, the anthropologists rather, or other scientists are the one writing on their behalf. So that is also based on their articulation. Kaya nakakagyakan man hera or nakakag-converse man hera. So a good example for a primary source is actually the original manuscript, meaning first-hand account written by Italian explorer Antonio Pigafetta during the Magellan's expedition. Because that is the exact reason why Pigafetta was... Um, involved in the expedition and that is to document the whole the whole expedition so his manuscript is considered as primary or primary source because he was actually there he he witnessed and he experienced the whole uh, exploration okay so even the dahan battle hamaktan he was there although what i hear did to han han api han naki or bullying han naki pag away and he was documenting the event Okay, so secondary source, on the other hand, um, are already a derivative of primary sources, which may provide interpretations, reflections, criticisms, etc. of it. So textbooks that compile and provide interpretations, um, reflections, and criticisms, so they are considered as... Um, because they provide inter uh, interpretations of historical events, they are a great example of secondary sources. Okay, so um, secondary source incorporates his or her personal insights. So, for instance, the historian and his own interpretations. Thus, detaching the original value of the component of the subject being discussed. So, secondary sources are often regarded as inferior to primary sources because this uh these secondary sources may or may may or may not siempre because uh the writers of secondary sources who are relying on primary sources may put an inference meaning they can uh while they are writing they create their own judgment they create their own own conclusion so pwede may adag itatawag kita nga bias there could be biases that is because uh based ito hit era interpretation han kun ano ang era nabasa tikang han primary source so a good example also is for example ikaw nagkikita ka hin usa nga umay nakitaan kang usa nga event and then you told your uh, or you tell your friends about the event and ini nga imo mga friends ikaw man ang primary source ini nga imo mga friends naman nagistorya syempre ngadto era paguro istorya ngadto naginis itera gin istorya nagistorya ngadto diri na ito accurate and information because there are most likely baga more or less may adadagdag may adabawas han istorya okay so 
Some sources also provide both primary and secondary segments like the newspapers or segmentapaan broadcasting. So, newspapers usually narrate events from the witness perspective and also provide interpretations and reflections from the writers. Okay, so kung ano ang era nakukuha nga information from the eyewitnesses, aside hito, kay, of course, the eyewitness is considered as a primary source. So kung ano ang era nakukuha nga information from them, they make also an interpretation of how or what the witness has told the reporter. Okay, so the second classification of sources is according to motive. Okay, so um, before we move on to this, premium is given to the use of primary source documents, especially in the writing of history. So even though this is a case, challenges arise from using, using primary sources. So in the case of the colonial history of the Philippines, not many historians and history enthusiasts can read the primary sources and therefore, resort to reading translations of these said documents. So, an example of translated primary source is the compilation of Emma Blair and James Robertson's The Philippine Islands, 1493 to 1898. So, another challenge in the reading of primary source or sources is the understanding of its context. Of course, kay, every information has its own context, man. It could be literal or pwede liwat nga figurative. So, at most care must be practiced by historians with constructing meanings of information because human cultures do not remain unchanged over time. So, one context may mean one thing and it could mean another thing pag iba na nga, ira, angin babasihan or angin babasahan. Okay, so for example, a document saying rats destroyed their house could mean several things in several timelines and contexts. So, if interpreted perhaps in the olden days, when things were taken literally, it could mean that the rats are the animals. But perhaps in a later age, the word rat could mean uh, traitors or uh, traitors, uh, traitor members of their house. So, pwede nga sugarito in a figurative form. Hence, it should be good for a historian to view the source from many angles and check them with other related sources or formulated meanings to be sound. This is how difficult writing history is. Kasi of course, for example, if you read something like ini nga narrative na rats destroy their house, pwede nga, aniya meaning is literal, pwede lewat nga um, figurative. So for you to make sure, for you to, to ensure nga, Ano ang correct mo nito nga context? You have to look into the era kung kakano ito ni information ginsurap. Kasi posible nga iba at iya karo yung signo. Okay? So, historical sources may also be classified as, again, adi according to motive. Um, and uh, there are two, intentional and unintentional. So, intentional sources were created solely to leave the information for the other people or the next generation. Okay? So, kumbaga, the intention, meaning, an intention is to make the information long-lasting. Meaning, not just for that moment, not just for that use, but for a lifelong use. Okay? So, however, an intentional uh, source naman is the opposite, meaning it is produced without any intent of future use. So, an example of an intentional source is the true version of the 1896 Philippine Revolution by Emilio Aguinaldo. So, he created that particular document to tell the other people and the next generation of his perspective of the 1896 revolution of which he was one of the leaders. So, if I, if I will be uh, if I will be reading or if I, I will be the one who will interpret Aguinaldo's uh, move to write this uh, true version of the Philippine Revolution, I would say, kumbaga, kung based on ako mga nabasa about Emilio Aguinaldo, about his reputation, I would definitely uh, sering pa be biased. Kaya masin ako nga, ah, probably Emilio Aguinaldo written or wrote that version of the Philippine Revolution to, to make himself kumbaga good in the eyes of the readers. Kasi, diba, there are issues saying, although uh, I'm not sure if this has already been proven, na there are issues that Emilio Aguinaldo was the mastermind of the killing 
of the Bonifacio brothers and Juan Luna. So, pwede liwat nga true or dere man true kasi depending of course of the historians kung paano na ragin istorya kung tuod nga talaga nga he is the greatest traitor because he sold the Philippines to the US may mga sugarito nga mga issues but of course ako as a reader that is just based on what I've read from history books okay so it's for you to find out and it's for you to to verify if the information bisan it akong gindi-discuss sa iyo if the information that I'm uh, telling you are accurate or not. Okay, so amo nga ninyo, you as students um, you are given the freedom to actually investigate whether the information that are shared to you are reliable or not. You have to verify that on your own. Okay, so on the other hand, an example of an unintentional source is the Manunggul Jar from which historians can generate information about the past. But the true purpose of that jar is not to share information because that jar was kumbaga, the secondary burial of human remains in the past. So if you are familiar with the Manunggul jar, actually, an, an, bagat nag-serve as urn, pero actually, hindi na kayo, dire man ging kikremate. Actual nga lawas ang nagsusulog dito nga ng Manunggul jar, nga ang iyakab, ang iyatakup, dalit was may ada... Um, sculpture of a boat nga may ada nag roro nga tao. So, amo itong posturahan Manunggul Jar. Um, you can check kung anong iyatsura. Pero again, Manung Manunggul Jar is used as a reference in the past although that is not the intent of creating those Manunggul Jars because the the primary use of the Manunggul Jars really were uh, was really for the burial of human remains. So, this is considered as an unintentional because it was produced without any intent of future use. Okay? So, Historians must consider the conditions under which a source was produced and the intentions that motivated its creation. So, the knowledge of the motivation behind the creation can be a good basis for objectivity. So, one of the great problems is historiog in historiography. rather. So, of course, establishing objectivity in the creation of the source is good, but it does not mean the total reliability of the document's contents. So, although pagiging objective, meaning there is no subjectivity, is good, you also have to check the reliability of the content of the document. Okay, so the last classification of uh, sources um, is the according to material. So, there are um, tagini, three types. So, the first one is the written documents. Okay, so... In the field of history, written documents are usually seen as the best source. Of course, because there are printouts, meaning may ada ka ebidensya. May ada ka talaga masisaring nga proof na may ada ka source. So, written sources can be categorized into three. We have the narrative or literary source, the diplomatic source, and the social documents. Okay? So... Let's move on to the first. So, narrative or literary is a category of written sources that tells us story or message that follow narrated commentary such as diaries, letters, novels, poetry, and many others. So, they, this type of source also describes the events, people, or ideas. Okay? So... Um, uh, uh, the other one is um, the other one is the diplomatic source or diplomatic sources. So these are usually legal documents such as executive orders or court rulings. So historians view diplomatic sources as the purest and most trustworthy and best sources. Of course, because for example, if it is an executive order, it has been sering pa umagi han pera kakamot tikang han mga uh, lawmakers ng tuhan executives. Okay, so and it has been implemented, meaning may da talaga concrete evidence nga inihiya na hinabo or in hiya gin, gin, gin conduct, okay? So, amon yan, according to historians, um, diplomatic sources is the purest and most trustworthy, okay? Kumbaga, may inagigod yan legalities. So, last one, 
Um, our last leak, social documents or records from organizations and other bureaucracies. For example, birth certificate, marriage certificate, and death records are examples of social documents. So, masayang ma'am, these are personal. No, they're not. They are considered as public documents because, for example, birth certificate, it is a form of sering pa or a proof that an individual has been born or that individual is existing. Marriage certificate is also considered as public document because, for example, ikaw, maging kasal na, waray ka magsumak, maging kasal ka na ngayon, tapos nakikipagkasal ka or nakikipag-asawa ka din ang usa. So, an imo ang asawa on has the right to know if you are really married or not. So, to check, of course, mga ngay- maging inahang lang yun or mga ngaroon yun marriage certificate. Death records are also important kaya pwede nga gamiton ito hiya for illegal purposes like masering nga um um tawag hini, to check if that individual or that person is already dead you have to check if it has been registered kay nga tanan nga, nga mortality kumbaga ideally nga tanan nga mortality in gin record ito to 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 prove that that individual is no longer existing. Kaya may da iba like maabot na election, may da iba nga bisan patay na, nabotos pa. Okay? So, one way to check if that individual is an active voter, kaya may da iba nga active pa dito han voter, voters list, pero may ada na nga yung death records. Okay? So, amot hira, and ato na consider nga, um, source, ah, uh, tawag hini, written sources under, uh, diplomatic source. So, the final type of written document is social uh no and social document is part of an akong mention kanina and kanan birth marriage and death records okay the last one is the archaeological evidence or material remains that are also good sources of history so this is especially um this is not written but it is under the material so archaeological evidence this includes artifacts jewelries Potteries, sculptures, structures, and many others. Okay, so amo inihera and mag consider natin yung mga archaeological evidences. So, for instance, we can, uh, our histo- uh, historians or ang mga archaeologists can say nga nabuhi ang mga dinosaurs or a certain animal nga now al- are already extinct based on the remains. Han era fossils. Yung makikita ni Hera to check na, ah, they, these animals were existing, hininga time, and hininga lugar. Okay? So, that is based on archaeological evidences. Okay, so another is the oral evidence. Um, it is uh, an information that is transmitted from one generation to the next through the word of mouth. So, masing, so may ada yung reliability. Yes. So, this kind of evidence as a source is usually from folk songs, tales, and stories, and rituals from tribes people which practice pre-modern life. So, in the age of technology, oral evidence has also evolved uh, in form captured in a film, video, and audio recording. So, they have lesser reliability but can be tested for it. So, of course, kasi oral manggud na and it was uh, passed through the word of mouth and sering ko pang ani when, uh, when it, kung baga kung information is passed through different sering pa levels, nag-iiba manggud at iya But again, in culture, for instance, it's, it has uh, a different uh, context. Kaya, for example, ang tales and stories, the folk songs, although ang tales and stories nga ni nag-i-evolve di hapon, kung baga, ang storyhan una, although may similarity, di rin na exactly the same. So, they have lesser reliability, but of course, they can be tested for it. And the reliability of oral evidence can be tested internally or externally. So, paano nga internally and externally? The internal test is done by checking the coherence of the information content to the period, place, etc. it is supposed to tell. So, ano ka nagsid mo natin? So, for instance, if you are familiar with the uh what do you call this the quotation ang hindi marunong magmahal ng sariling wika o higit pa sa walang sang isda was a phrase uh kumbaga bagan tawag hindi an excerpt from Jose Rizal's allegedly from Jose Rizal's uh, poetry sa aking mga kabata but there are historians who are arguing that it was not written by Rizal because for one there was no manuscript nga existing 
nga makakapag-prove that it was Rizal who wrote that uh, poetry. And aside from that, kay nasa ring man nga Rizal was 8 when he wrote that poetry. Pero kung makikita mo ang way of writing, like an using of letter K, if you trace back itong nga time nga yung si Sering nga 8 years old, Rizal, the Filipinos that time, because that was uh, in a Spanish era, they were not using the letter K. Because if they uh, if, if, if ito nga time, ang era gamit was letter C para uh, gamiton han words or sinong ta phrases nga nakikinahanglan hin K sound. Okay, so they were using C. And then another another proof according to Ambeth Ocampo is um, an usage of the word kalayaan. Kasi if it's true that Rizal wrote that when he was aged, they were not allowed actually, they were not allowed to use the word kalayaan because it, it may mean during hitong nga time, that you are provoking a revolution. So, amo ito, an usang a way to check if an evidence is internal or, yeah, if, if the, if the, if the, ang tawag yun, if it is internal. Okay, so, external test of the reliability of oral evidence is by knowing whether the narrator is a member of the group that controls the transmission of the information. Okay, so, historians should only trust oral sources if it can be verified by other forms of evidence. So, aside from that, what na iba. That is the only, Sarimpa, that is the only way to verify uh, the source as a form of evidence. So, technological innovations of mankind were also instrumental sources to the writing of history. So, these innovations include photographs, moving pictures, sound recordings, radio, TV, and film recordings, which emerged from the 1800s to 1900s. So, all these types and classifications of sources can be used to complement each other and strengthen interpretations of historians. Okay, so do you have any questions? So, if you have any questions, you can just write them down. And hopefully, during our next meeting, if the internet connectivity permits us, then we will be discussing about your queries, your uh, reactions, clarifications, if you have any. Okay, now, let's move on to the next. Um, the locating historical sources and the sources of Philippine history. So, actually, historical sources can be found anywhere. Okay, they are anywhere. So, usually, highly informative and val valuable written sources can be found in archives, while unwritten sources are usually found in museums. So, many documents about countries are found in their centralized archives. So, in modern times, many institutions and organizations um, also have independent archives for their record keeping. So, imagine kung an usang museum or usang sering pa example, uh, a national archives. Imagine if that building or that institution is masunog, as in totally masunog. So, nga tanan nga, kumbaga sering pa, nga tanan nga, gin-collect para ma-trace back ang history, mawawara, ma-erase. So, baga-baga laliwat nga, ang history ito nga usang area or usang country has been erased. Okay? So, may ada usang country nga, era 200 plus years old or more, Mas, mas maiha pa ada nga history was caught in a fire na as in totally abotanan so waray uh, kumbaga they will uh, start from zero to trace back their history so imagine that it is very very heartbreaking mas heartbreaking pa ito kung that break up with your boyfriend or girlfriend okay so in the Philippines, the largest repository of historical sources of national relevance can be found in the National Museum, the National Library. Here are the photos. These are the national. This is the National Museum, um, the National Library, and the National Archives. Uh, just recently, a National Archives nasunog pero derigad nga bugos portion of it na hopefully wala may nahiapi nga mga <clears throat> nga mga historical nga mga sources. Okay, so other repositories would include or would also include institutional libraries of schools and universities such as the University of the Philippines de Liman, Ateneo de Manila University, University of Santo Tomas, Belasal University, and many others. So, 
pwede nga and, and mga information or the books that were kumbaga, relevant in our history are in these universities or big universities especially ini nga mga iba didi nga part and atom history kumbaga hiramis mga universities mga part and history so they are considered as repositories also because they they are probably keeping some records in the past okay so study centers also hold historical sources that are specific to a particular subject or topic like the Cebuano Study Center at the University of San Carlos in Cebu. So finally, there are also historical sources that are readily available on the internet. So example is archive.org. But again, you have to check the source if it is reliable or not. Because Wikipedia um, for one is not a reliable source because anyone can just edit the information written there. Okay, so mas mamimiling ka kung if you want a genuine or sinong pa reliable source, you have to check kung di in an iya uh, source ha internet. Okay, so sources of Philippine history for the Spanish period, um, the National Archives, the Dominican Provincial Archives, or the Convent of Santo Domingo, the Rizal Library of Ateneo de Manila in the Liman Quezon City are among the few reasonable places to go because of their rich collection of Spanish sources. Especially that in Ateneo, um, uh, Rizal was a student, a previous student in Ateneo, so most likely may mga write-ups nga ato dito. And may ada siguro mga, kumbaga, people who were actual nga nakipag kumbaga naki, nakaupod ni Rizal or nakaistura ni Rizal during his stay in Ateneo that are kept, kumbaga these information are kept in Ateneo de Manila in the Rizal library. Okay, so you can also use the Philippine National Archives which contains the largest collection of manuscript sources detailing the entire Spanish colonial period from 1565 to 1898. So, it contains an estimated 11 million documents packed into ligajos or bundles and up until now, still uncatalogued except for the topics of Guerra from 1837 to 1898 and Mindanao Isulu from 1857 to 1897. So, most of the sources to be found in the archives can be classified as scraps of evidence because they are still, kumbaga, um, Dari pahiya na kabandal kung baga ko ampa loose pages pa so they are just taken from these things with topics and subtopics headings. Okay, so in the contemporary period, meaning in the present time, in addition to written sources, artifacts can be used together with oral sources or sources by word of mouth. So potential sources can be newspapers, speeches of politicians or prominent people, interviews, films slideshows, reminiscence, etc. Okay, so to extract uh, information and scraps of evidence, interviews can be enough with selected people, either an influential or ordinary person. Of course, yana readily available naman mga videos and uh, cameras. So, madali nala ipag-document. Unless, of course, dari hiya ma, ma, maruruba. Pero, syempre, yana, bisan video can be edited. Okay, so the parish records may also contain ancestral data such as death, birth, marriage, baptism, and social mobility from one place to another because ini nga tanan, ang ginaanak, ang bubunyagan, ang namamatay, ang dinisahan, ang kikakasal, ang padi ang nagkakasal, yes, mga sugad hini. So they keep these records, ang mga nga may kita nga baptismal records, nga ato ito nakakip ha, simbahan or ha content. So, the municipal records produce abundant information or can be great sources giving a more or less complete characterization of a certain community. So, for instance, if you want to check the origin of Jose Rizal, you only have to go to Alamba Laguna and check the records in their, uh, in the, in their municipality. Mga ka, nga, kung may daba dito record Jose Rizal, nga ginanak siya ito dito ng lugar. Kung available na ito ang documentation po rin niya time. So, the Municipal Secretary's Office is the repository of various typescript data ranging from ordinances, resolutions, administrative circulars to the cultural activities, barrio records, proceedings of the town council, and ecological data from engineer's office, spelling out town planning, and development. So, this information can already be uh, gathered, hindi nga mga different offices, 
even in rural or in urban areas. So social, urban, and oral history can be written based on these data available from the municipal offices. So if you want to fact check you can just go to the municipal office for example if there is a dispute uh in in lands within your family you only have to go to the assessor's office to have the title check if ito talaga nakangaran or dere nakangaran na im or haimo pamilya so pwede ito ni makuha na kumbaga just that is a, that is part of history of course kasi gusto mo makita kung narahin ng mga naging owners ito nga land kaya ano kaya na may ada na siya nga may ada hiya kalugarin ng titulo ito nga tunang nga supposedly ka na ni iyo pamilya so you only have to check and to go to the assessor's office in your area to check the siling pa reliability of the documents that you are holding and finally, let us go to historical criticisms. So, in the book or in the book of Louis Gottschalk, he talked of the process of history where only a part of what has happened in the past was observed and recorded will come to be used of the historians. So, it is actually the historians and history enthusiasts' task to be able to discern what materials would be used in realizing the account of the past. So, a certain process called historical criticism is used to do so. It is a process by which a document is subjected to, validi uh, to validate its authenticity and reliability. So, um, since uh, it is a process, um, historical criticism has two levels or parts, or parts. So, the first is external criticism and the second is the internal criticism so external criticism is concerned with the question of the authenticity of, of a historical source so this is done by identifying the author of the source the location and time of its production and the materials value as evidence okay so on the other hand Internal criticism is concerned with the credibility and reliability of the content of a historical source. Okay? So, an adding an, an adi nga external has something to do with the authenticity. Meaning, if it is true or not. A internal criticism naman has something to do with credibility and reliability. Okay? So, this centers on how the author frames the substance and message of the historical material and also the firmness and consistency of his reporting of the event so historians and history enthusiasts must use a certain test of authenticity to determine genuine documents so it is not easy to create history or to write history so the most basic test is to see if the material is not anachronistic, meaning it does not belong to the period it is said to be in. So, for example, a printed document about life in Philippines claiming to be from the 12th century is surely a fake one. Since printing in the Philippines was non-existent until the Spaniards brought it with them. So, the name Filipinas also for the islands was a Spanish contribution which was given by Villalobos to the islands of Samar and Dayte on the 1940s. So, amo ito din higi hapon magagamit ang kanina nga akong example about the excerpt of, of from the poetry of Rizal Dao, um, alleged, al alleged ko answering pa alleged poetry na he Rizal Dao ang nagsurat when in fact, diri man talaga. There are evidences or proofs that can say that it was not Rizal who wrote that. Okay, so aside from this, Basic test historians might also look into disciplines like uh, sigillography or sigils, paleography or handwriting, genealogy, heraldry, coat of arms, example linguistics, and many others to examine the authenticity of documents. And by the way, let us look into this diagram. So, this uh, is an illustration of how historians arrive in getting the account of the past. Okay? So, imagine. This is the account. This portion. This is the account. Ini nga guti ay the smallest circle. This is the account. Okay? Now, is it available, usable, believable records for a given historical account? So, amot hiya. It is available, usable, be believable. Okay? That is the, kumbaga, sering pa the main source. So, for instance, if events for which we have surviving records, if this is the raw material of history, then it will be used. So, events observed 
Ready? The third layer. Events observed, remembered, and recorded. So, if these are unrecorded or if actions are unrecorded and thoughts have been lost to history. So, those information that are not recorded or have not been recorded, they are considered as waray na. Di rin na mapapas on the next generations kay waray hiya records or waray hiya proof. So, events observed and remembered um, will continue However, events observed but not remembered have been lost to history. So, what I what I mean, Anabu, because it has not been recorded. Okay, so, and the last one here is events observed by someone. So, events not observed have been lost to history. So, that is how they arrive um, in getting an account of the past. So, imagine just one information, they they do this one. Ini, ini hiya nga, nga diagram, they do that from getting the information. If for instance, about information, there are cer certain information about that subject nga importante kunta, pero it is unrecorded. Then, hitun nga portion, hitun nga, baga hitun nga part, hitun nga information, hitun nga subject will no longer be available because it is considered as it is lost in the history because it is not recorded, meaning there is no proof but a justification that it really happened or it is really or it has uh, it has existed.